Let's go. Go, 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 go. Someone else that was go. in my thoughts going into this uh, Thanksgiving is uh, while uh, while you spend time with your family on Thanksgiving and I spent time in my bedroom masturbating and napping, uh, someone else uh, didn't have too great of a Thanksgiving. Your boy Takashi mm. was locked up. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. He was locked up for uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, the charges are serious, Papo. Uh, things are not looking good for the boy Takashi. Not good at all. No, no, I bet. Is it true that they put him like in the general population? Or was that just a rumor? We'll break down. There's a whole timeline to it. And actually, shouts out the complex. I'm going to share the screen. Uh, shouts out the complex. They have a whole breakdown of the legal problems and how this shit has escalated. And we'll get to the general population part of it. Um, but essentially, yeah, uh, Sits9 was arrested this last week on racketeering charges. Rico, uh, him and his uh, former associates, uh, Treyway, Shoddy. Treyway. Uh, Treyway, Treyway got arrested too. And they are um, all facing life in prison. Um, and they're also looking at mandatory minimum sentences of 32 years. Now, how we got to this, um, and just a quick recap. Um, you go back to October 2015. Uh, Sits uh, Nine pleaded guilty to the use of child uh, use of a child in a sexual performance. Uh, this dated back to February 2015, when the rapper and several other men had a 13 year old girl on Snapchat with them. Um, I think she flashed a pussy of titties or some shit like that. Was, weren't you giving some head to? I don't remember if there was actual sexual acts. I remember her. Oh no, um, he listened, including getting the refrain from posting or reposting sexually explicit or violent images that feature children or women to social media. Um, I think she just showed some nudity. I don't think there was actual sexual intercourse. I could be incorrect on that, but. Um, but yeah, so he got hit with that shit um, in May of 2016. Treyway um, got arrested in New Jersey. So he had been on the run from the cops. Uh, apparently he had some uh, hair on on him. He was uh, slanging Ooh. that weight. Um, then uh, beginning of 2018, you had in uh, Houston, uh, there was a fight with a 16-year-old fan. A uh, kid was shooting a video of him. Uh, the party guards ran up on him, roughed him up. Then in uh, April of 2018, you had the Casanova video shoot where um, there was a shooting at Casanova's um, music video and then was uh, suspected that somebody from Sits Nine's crew is one who actually had uh, did the shooting. Then you had Sits Nine in May of 2018 driving with a suspended license. Uh, remember back in July, he fucking got kidnapped. Then uh, 20 was it August. Fucking, they had to get the strap video with 50 Cent, Sits Nine, and Casanova. And uh, there was a shooting over there. Then in September of 2018, uh, the FBI raided his house uh, while he was in Dubai filming a video. They found an AR 15 in a backpack that had credit cards and ID from a man who was robbed in April. Um, and then finally this last, um, he had got sentenced in October of 2018. Uh, he got four years of probation. And then that's when shortly after that, he said, Hey, i left my crew. I broke up with my crew. Um, oh no. And actually fuck. God damn. I didn't realize it was so much shit. So <laughs> fucking, uh, in October, I don't think we talked about this. The dude, uh, Elliot Grange. Uh, did you hear about that shooting? Uh, was that also at another video shoot? Because uh, that's where I thought so, most of the shit was popping out. Before the video shoot, there was another shooting. Um, Elliot Grange is the son of, I think his name is like Lucius Grange or something like that. He's the guy that runs Universal Records and Universal, you know, okay. the label that 90% of all music artists are on. Um, Elliot's his son, and Elliot and Sits Nine were at a restaurant, uh, uh, Felipe Chow. And um, there was a, apparently some of the rappers, entourage, including Shoddy, tried to get in, but Grange's security wouldn't let him in. A melee broke out, and um, one of the bodyguards got hit with a chair. And then Crippy, who sits on his bodyguard, got shot in the stomach. Um, whole bunch Cripple, of man. shit. Crippy is crippled now. Crippy is crippled now. Goddamn. Uh, Yo, what is it that I heard about him, him like firing his whole staff? So is that's that coming up? That's okay. coming up. 
so then in november uh that was the video shoot when he was at the with kanye and Nicki minaj and the video shot uh the video music video place got shot up um so then yeah november 14th um he pleaded guilty had some charges for disorderly conduct so on and so forth then yeah november 15th of 2018 this is the week that everything started going downhill he fired everybody he announced that he fired his whole team canceled his u.s dates on his tour um because they had robbed him of some money they claimed that he was only making sixty thousand per show but then um he was able to get a hold of the booker and it turned out that the booker had paid 3.6 million for for 15 shows so do the math that's a whole lot more than sixty thousand a show so he was getting robbed um and so he had um um fired everybody and then shortly after he fired everybody the feds um hit him up and was like um yeah there's uh, a hit out on your life and they were like do you want to come into uh custody for protection sits and i was like no nah, i don't need no custody i'm cool so on and so forth next day sits nine tries to go to the casino feds pick him up because they don't want innocent bystanders shot in the process and then um yeah during all that he was denied bail and then it came out oh by the way we got these rico charges on y'all niggas because we've been watching y'all since 2013 and uh we got a laundry list of charges on you guys and uh so yeah sits nine is uh currently in the fucking federal penitentiary and as uh papa alluded to earlier the prison that he was at they put him in general population um and as it appears to be they put him in general population um away from everybody else in hopes that he would get to snitching because that's the whole thing and that's what that's normally what you do when you have a crew that didn't commit it some shit you try to separate them and you get them to turn on each other so niggas will start pointing the fingers and like hey if y'all if y'all don't cooperate everybody's getting life if some of y'all cooperate these other guys will get harsher penalties than you guys and so yeah you know i didn't even consider that so, that, so that's what that's that's their squeeze is that what's going on so, so now i'm wondering then because is it true that he got did he ever get bond on that or is he still stuck up in there so as the story goes and that's the net side of the story shouts out to uh the fucking tmz who unfortunately um has a scoop on this because i'm pretty sure tmz is working with the feds but that's a story for another day <laughs> um yeah so he was <laughs> he was in general population and apparently uh there's some speculation that uh somebody may have put hands on him um because sits nine did get transferred to a new facility which is reportedly the facility used for when people start working with the feds to snitch they move them to a safer area and there was a uh someone took a photo of the id because you know they take your picture before they transfer you or whatever and the id picture it's kind of unclear so i i it's speculation on my end but from a lot what a lot of people think it looks like sits nine's lips was busted up in the picture so a little like yeah. shenanigans may be going on looks like somebody may have put hands on a nigga before he got transferred oh they give him a little uh squeeze it bottle it was fruit punch yeah, yeah i mean gave him a little 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 two-piece extra crispy and Yo, uh, i'm just wondering yeah. oh my goodness if they would if they would have uh had to put hands on them right like you you get someone looking like that like uh, whether you feel like this guy's a clown or or it, i'm just i mean because the hair though right like uh, above all else in the you know face ryan uh like that has to be a dead giveaway no or or do you feel like he might have gotten some credit while he was up in there like i guess town would tell if he survives it as the story goes according to his lawyer his lawyer and again you know the law system is the law system so you know it's a lot of uh politicking and shit but the lawyer uh got up it was like uh because he was trying to post bail he put all 1.7 million dollars he had in his bank account up um to try to get out of jail they wouldn't let him post bail and the lawyer was like uh essentially six nine isn't a gangster this is an image that he's putting on so he could sell records there was another lawyer who actually was in the office or in the courtroom while this was going down and he was like when sits nine came in he was like sits nine looked like he was shaking and looked like he had been shaking for a while he was like he sits nine looked terrified um and so yeah i i 
6'9", I don't think he's a punk because uh, even before the rap career, before he blew up, I mean, he's been getting fucking charges where how him and Shoddy, because Shoddy, him and Shoddy are like 16 years apart in age. And him and Shoddy met in Riker, or Rikers or some shit like that because 6 9 oh, been, has been getting in legal trouble. So 6 9 isn't a pussy. Um, but I don't think he's some racketeering crime boss. And uh, they got him up there with the big boys right now. And um, yeah, and according to TMZ, actually, let me share the screen. Uh, you want to read this one? Yeah, let's take a look here. All right, so they're saying that and as uh, when, when was this posted? Oh, this, this was the twenty second. Okay, so just uh, again, just before the Thanksgiving weekend, they're saying that they were that he was transferred to federal facilities. Uh, I guess regularly used to house witnesses with uh, you know co- that normally cooperate with the feds, or which I guess is so they already kind of stitching that he's going to be snitching. That's what they're trying to do. That, I mean, either which way, they hadn't gotten any sort of comments on it. They're still trying to figure out what kind of deal they're going to cut. Takashi, who again has been behind bars since Wednesday, uh, of course, he's going to be the center of all attention, being in the general population. But again, it doesn't. It's not really uh, alluding to anything other than the fact that it's the, you know all these racketeering charges. Which again, he's not the you can say mastermind. So they definitely going to get some pulp out of this squeeze. They they have to, unless he's going to really try to ride things. Out. Out, but you got to wonder too like how much does he actually know uh to to remain quiet if so and that and that was one of the things because a couple of the charges that he's up on one of them was a shooting and or no there was a robbery and sits nine recorded the robbery with his phone Dummy. and then gave the video to academics so academics oh. is caught up in this shit too feds may come knocking on academics doors then there was another shooting where um um somebody i think it was shot he got out of his car was shooting at somebody sits nine was there so sits nine has been around some of this shit so he may not know everything but he's been witness to some of this shit and the unfortunate part about it he's on probation so even if he's exonerated of all this stuff He's still probably more than likely getting at least four years in prison because, nigga, you're on probation. You can't get in (laughs) trouble while you're on probation. And so, yeah, I mean, he's going to get it hard, yo. There's really no kind of ifs, ands, or buts about it as far as, you know, what angle he could try to pull. I'm just wondering how quickly it's going to happen. And can the media or the labels try to use this to the advantage somehow, some way? Or do they let him go by the wayside of Bobby Shimmerda? And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Bobby Schmurder thing again. And one thing that I thought was interesting was that his album was supposed to come out on Friday. And then all this shit happened and they pushed the album back indefinitely. I thought they're going to try to capitalize off this because Takashi's name is ringing through the streets right now with all the shit that's going on. And I figured they try to capitalize off of that. But I guess they're thinking long term, he can't sit around and do videos and all that. But if the nigga looking like he might do four to seven to 32 to life, might as well put the album out now. Let us hear that double <laughs> boy. I was gonna Might say well so. Let us hear that shit. So had there just been mixtapes that this brother's been been on that he's been uh getting all this not- notoriety? Singles. In? Singles. He went 10 for 10 with he put out 10 singles that all hit the billboard top 100. And then he did have a mixtape that had um what was the song? The gummo. Gummo Mm -hmm. was on a mitts tape that had a bunch of hits on it or whatever, but this was going to be his first actual official album. Um, And then, um, yeah, but yeah, the shit ain't looking good for him. And then actually shots out to Fat Joe. Uh, Let me share this this one. Uh, It was kind of eerie because... Oh, uh, it was trying to give him game. Uh, did you see that shit? I I saw they look like they were in a van like on the way to the stash house I I don't recall exactly what video it was but remember he had sat sat down with the with Takashi and he was putting him up on Game Man and as I was because my girl sent me these clips on on IG and as I'm seeing like their interaction like Takashi was so blase blah that I'm not too sure if that was uh, 50's influence and however much he would have hyped him up or if it was just a matter of him saying, oh, what you old nigga, like, I don't need to respect, you know, your avenues. I, I couldn't tell. He's no, I, think it's, I think it's the unfortunate part of young niggas always don't want to listen to the OGs because they think they know better. And the OGs are trying to say, hey, man, we've been there. We mm-hmm. know that Fat Joe is a good example. Uh, Fat Joe was in these streets. 
Like Fat Joe ain't no punk. His name, right. his name is respected in New York. Fat Don't Joe. Call he he got some history, so Fat Joe knows what he's talking about. But yeah, Fat Joe had interviewed him uh, for his title podcast. Uh, what he got the podcast edition. on title? Yeah, oh. the podcast called Coke Edition. And um, yo, it makes sense. Yeah, and um, he had said that uh, apparently this uh, interview was from nine to ten months ago. He said uh, they're on his podcast, Coca Vision, on title. He was oh, I was trying to school him because I've been through that. I had the heat on me. I was wilding on the streets. I've tried to tell him as a young kid, it's my job because the OGs when I come into the game schooled me. They could have stopped me from a lot of troubles. It's just ain't Takashi. It could be young, uh, young boy NBA or whoever. Whenever I catch one of these young boys, I've tried to school them and let them know. It's just so happened that Takashi thing was on film i was just telling him what was going to happen unfortunately i was right i prayed for him last night because i actually really like the kid he's actually a cool kid unfortunately he's got some serious situation on his hand and um that is the thing that and shots out to the same thing with joe button joe button when he was on everyday struggle was constantly uh talking to these young niggas like we're trying to school you cats on what's going on and how they gonna do you and these cats ain't listen and you got Schmurda who got seven years you got fucking um uh et -Sets Jitsantion, they got murdered mm -hmm. and unfortunately now you got fucking Takashi who's looking at 32 years like young niggas listen y'all don't know everything sometimes somebody else may have some info that could help your ass but people don't want to listen oh no I got this I know I know what I'm no I got this no you don't but <laughs> and at the same time, like, uh, I wonder, and again, came from a broken family, but never a broken family to where I sought for love and recognition up in the streets. So I'm wondering, and I don't know this dude's backstory, but we can only assume it's the same of a single, you know what I'm saying, mother home kind of nonsense. I'm wondering. His you... dad got murdered in front of him. Oh, oh. Or his dad got murdered and he found the body. So his oh. dad was around for a while. Okay. Well, then, uh, again, doesn't really depart then from whether or not he has put so much love and dedication and devotion into the people who have, he helped them out over the years that he wouldn't see, you know what I'm saying, kind of being on that puppet string of sorts. I mean, you got to understand, and mind you, I don't, I, I don't fully understand the game of chess, but I understand that it's a whole other matter of multiple moves other than, you know, how the old saying goes, is chess not check, is like, I don't know, you, 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 you would think... Especially, do you believe that uh, education is any better on the East Coast than it is on the West? No, I think it's a classism thing. I think classism. regardless of where you're at, the private schools, you're going to get a better education than public schools. I don't think it matters left or East or West. Okay. Because cause I know that there'll be certain times where you figure you, you think of, you know, New York being like this mecca of, you know, culture and, you know, influence or, or whatever. And you see some of the ignorance and especially like the fact that every single time that there's some kind of gang rape, why is it that it's always a 13 year old? Same shit with the Takashi thing that he got caught up in. Why was it that it was a 13 year old? Every that that like I'm not even kidding you. It's for whatever reason like like the sweet number. As terrible as it sounds, like that's always that's always what it is being passed around in the train. That's the that's the youngest teenager you can grab, I guess. Because before <laughs> that's 12, so it's not a teenager. So you're like, no, that's real child molestation. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. that's the caveat. You gotta get that teen in there because teen because all also mean 19. Like niggas. Oh, 13, 19, just a seven year yeah. difference. What's the difference? No, well that's terrible then. And, but I always see this, so I'm always thinking to myself, are they just more advanced? Why is it? And it, but then at the same time, I mean, you see it, you know how they say the black don't crack, and you really couldn't tell the difference between a 30-year-old and a 50-year-old depending on their, their type of drug use. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some there's some times where you you couldn't tell. Um, what was the... <laughs> Gary Coleman, was he just a midget, or did he have some kind of disease? No, I think he was a midget. Yeah, it was just a midget. Yeah. Okay, because I'm trying to think like, well, I mean, there's, we just see it so many times. You really couldn't tell, yeah. uh, especially depending on you know dietaries and all that good stuff. But I do. I always wonder, like, I always just put the East Coast on this higher plateau. Like, oh, you know, I don't know. You, you obviously must be well educated if you're out there. But I mean, if you go to a school called PR 219, like you just another fucking number, <laughs> and you're at the lowest, <laughs> the bottom of the barrel when it comes wow. to the private schools. You're right, classisms. Now, the question I do have, and this is a question I've seen floating around online, is so if Takashi does get to snitching so he can be protected, if you will, and get out, is that the end of his rap career or does this generation not care about if he snitches or not? 
I honestly feel like they probably wouldn't care. I like, I personally, I don't care. If uh, and it, 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 it sounds bad, but if you a rapping nigga surrounded by a bunch of gangsters and them ain't your people anyway, and them niggas is extorting you, and then y'all get knocked, and then they're trying to give you thirty two years for some shit that you didn't do that they did. I'm not mad if Takashi's in the in the courtroom like it was that nigga. Hang on, <laughs> I got the rope. It was oh. him. Pointing I'm not right mad. At his ass. <laughs> I'm not mad. So I'm sorry. I'm still he could he can snitch on everybody. I'm still listening to dump, Dummy Boy, man. I'm still. But see, but you know what though? And this is gonna be my haterisms, but like I can't stand them. For the moment a few years back that you introduced Gumbo to me, like I I felt the hypeness, but I can't stand them. Yeah, I'm not too sure if it's if it's like you know how black on black if it's the Latino versus Latino thing and being upset that he can't pick whether he's Puerto Rican or pick that he's Mexican. Like I, I don't know exactly what it is that tips me off about it. I don't know if it's the hair. I don't know if it's him writing on his face. I'm not too sure if it's him taking ownership as the number 69 and that was my number previously before. I don't ex I don't exactly know the exact pin pinnacle point of my hatred for him that don't want me to see him succeed but at the same time like there's just some shits i just i just i loathe like he has a track with Nicki minaj and don't fifi. none of it fifi it doesn't none, none of it make no goddamn sense i don't know what the hell he's saying Fifi is that wet wet that the cat cat and the, that uh, yo i fucks with it i don't know what it is oh. it, it, you know how much i hate Nicki, so it's kind of oh, like yeah. I, I feel like but, he's picking on my nemesis this is this so Takashi, I am someone who I was a fan of Takashi's music. And mm -hmm. so I was a or I was a fan of Takashi on three levels. The first level was um I grew up in the 50 era. I saw 50 come up in 2002 and it was no surprise that the two of them gravitated and became so close because Takashi is this generation's 50 cent. That's exactly what 50 was doing. 50 was a motherfucking troll in the streets and it was like, yo, he going to get killed at some point. But what was it about fight. 50 that made it seem so was it just that he's more charismatic? See, but that's the thing. I think it's just, it's a generation Generational. gap because Takashi is just as charismatic because that's part two. It's part two. I started following the kid outside of the uh, social media antics or whatever. And he did like two interviews with Breathless Club and he's done a bunch of interviews. The kid is charismatic. The kid is likable. Like when he's in public and he runs into kids who are fans of his or whatever, he's very humble. Like, don't be like me. Like he, the kid, what the kid wasn't the kid was smart and that's the unfortunate part is too many people and i told skips this too uh because she's the same way she can't stand him i'm like have you watched any of his interviews no well exactly you're only going off of the fuck shit that you're saying on social media which is understandable but no there's a whole lot more going on the kid fucking uh he i mean he should have he, he should have against the charlamagne that I, I do give him props for that the fact that he didn't let charlamagne shit on him or but at the same time charlamagne didn't doesn't hate on Takashi the way they hate some Post Malone. Yeah, Post Malone's trash though. <laughs> but uh no, but yeah, Takashi, he didn't met up with a bunch of kids. He didn't did make a wishes for kids. Uh he opened up a, a school in the Dominican Republic. Like Takashi has done a lot of shit, but people get caught up on the fuck shit that he's doing on Instagram. I, I want to like you're not following thing. the whole picture. So and you're right, because when we don't look full circle, you're mad at the art, and maybe you're mad mad at the art against the artist, and not so much the more of the creativity that comes around to it. I saw one, and mind you, and I, I can love and respect anyone who has that philanth philanthroparian thing in them. You know what I'm saying? That they want to give, not only for tax credits, but also for the sheer fact of you know karmatic points and whatnot. And there was once this video that I thought it was I thought he was trolling because he was I think giving people who's passing out plates of food. Food. And there's these bums, forgive me for calling them that, uh, sleeping out in the streets. Chicago. Like, yeah, was it? When he was in Chicago. And he yeah. like just puts one on top of the guy's head and be like, here you go. And then like he's out there like talking to the video, like, yeah, we out here feeding cats. I'm like, you just put a freaking uh, plastic uh, plastic plate up on this dude's head. Like, you probably don't want to be bothered. So like, that was him trolling when he had the beef with Chief Keith. And Chief Keith mm -hmm. was like, don't come into my hood. And then he went to Chicago and he was in the hood passing out food to the homeless. So that was him. That was him trolling 
he's a troll okay. he's a fucking troll but uh yeah and just i i i rocks with takashi and uh, you know i the other side of it too is just he's 22 like and right. I, I i'm mature when we at 22 bro i was the piece <laughs> Nigga, I was a piece of shit till like fucking yeah. 32. So like, <laughs> I, and that's why, and same thing going back to Etz, like I know Etz had the domestic violence stuff and none of that shit is cool, none of that shit. But again, the thing that people forget at times, a lot of these motherfuckers is kids. And we keep fucking like, oh, oh, you need to counsel him forever or whatever. He's a fucking kid. And if we had Twitter and social media around when I was a teenager, oh, it'd be yo, even actually more so. Um, I saw uh Twitter, I think I opened up my Twitter like seven, eight years ago. And um, I went through some of my old tweets from like eight years ago. And I used to go ham on the homosexual community. I did not get it. I did not approve of it. I thought they were going to hell. Like I was very tough on the homosexual community. And every so often I would see tweets come up from seven, eight years ago. It would make really? me cringe. Cause I'm like, I do not think like that anymore. But we live in a society where let me have blown up or whatever. Mm -hmm. Somebody did. Oh, look at these, look at these tweets from eight years ago. That's how he think. Cause you, you can only think one way. And you don't never evolve as a person. And it's that bullshit like that. Let people grow. Let people grow. There are some people they do some fucked up shit. Hitler, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That is like, yeah, I can't forgive you for that shit. But you gotta let people grow. We're trying to figure this shit out. People are trying to figure it out. And that just makes that makes me think back of the James Gunn, the director of the Garden, Gardens of the Galaxy movies, how you guys shipped up over some dumb situations. You know what? But in your defense, though, with all the homophobic slurs, can we not blame Eminem and the machismo on this that was started from the generation two back of just you know being you know left or right? And the funny thing with my homosexual rants was that was when I was super religious. So I was just really? quoting what I thought I had to say because I was a Christian. So it was like this, oh, oh, oh marriage is between a man and a woman. And that is on that. It was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I was saying all that bullshit <laughs> that fucking Christians say. And then I become became awoke, if you will, and uh, got unplugged from the Matrix, as I feel. And I started looking at things differently. And then I was like, and so I just looked back and I'm like, I'm not the same person I was seven, eight years ago, let alone fucking 13, 15 years ago. Like, nigga, again, if I if I had a motherfucking Twitter when I was 16 years old, people would never fucking forgive me. The way I thought that, nigga, I was on one. Niggas don't know. I was on one. I was in these streets for real. Like, it, <laughs> like, it was a different... I was yeah. a different person back yeah, then. So I, 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 you gotta let these kids live, man. You oh, yeah! If you didn't like this podcast, it's probably because you're racist. Yeah. Fuck your feelings, though. <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? You hear me?